Namaste everyone. Good evening to all. Today we have a special guest. She is joining from London. She's basically from Bangalore. Now she is settled in UK. She is a UK citizen. I know Pallavi from uh, uh, her husband actually. Sridhar is my one of my good friend. Uh, well, we agreed uh, to give us a session. I'm uh, very thankful to her. She is an art of living teacher. I'm uh, looking forward uh, for a great session, Pallavi. Welcome, heartily welcome. Thank and, you so much, Guru. Uh, please start. Thanks. Thank you for please inviting start. me. And um, uh, am I audible? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, uh, first of all, thank you so much. And um, I have been following all the videos uh, that have been happening, all the meetings and interviews that have been happening all this uh, while. And it's really, really very inspirational. And I feel so honored to uh, join here and, uh, you know, share some of uh, the things that uh, I know about spirituality or mind, or uh, yoga and meditation. So just to give a small introduction about myself, I'm a homemaker and a part-time accountant and um, I have a 15 year old son and uh, I live with my husband and son in uh, London. And I've been associated with uh, the Art of Living Foundation since the year 2000. So it's uh, about 20 years now uh, since I've been uh, following all the practices, the techniques that I have learned there um, with respect to the mind and body and uh, I've been teaching a lot of uh, courses, uh, both in India as well as uh, here in the UK uh, since about 11 years now. And um, yeah, this is a little bit about myself. Um, Art of Living is a, a, a big, uh, you know, humanitarian um, um, organization and it conducts various uh, courses uh, uh, with respect to the health and happiness and uh, it also conducts service projects across the world and I'm really uh, happy and uh, proud to be a part of this organization. So uh, yeah, as uh, the name suggests for this particular meeting, uh, mind matters. Yeah, so there's a lot about the mind that we need to know uh, in today's world. So just um, to start with, uh, is it possible to ask you all, uh, what do you mean by a healthy body? What, do you, what is your definition about health? You can either uh, answer or you can type something so that I'll get an idea about how much we all have already understood or, uh, you know, uh, what, where do we stand um, regarding the health? What does actual health, good health mean to you? If you can put some comments in the chat or if you can just uh, disease free. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Stress free, disease free. Very good. Anything else? Okay, so um, yes, it does mean, uh, you know, being stress free, alert mind, having an alert mind, yes. So uh, disease free and being stress free. Yes, we have another answer physically, mentally and socially well being. Yeah, very good. Very good. So uh, most of the people, what they think in today's world is that being healthy means that is something which is concerned only with the body, the physical body. Yeah. So what do we do to keep our body healthy? We eat good food, we take care of the diet, we go in, go, go to gym, go for a walk, we do yoga, a lot of things, yeah. But we rarely, you know, at, um, attend to the concept which is called as a mind, you know. That particular uh, part of our being, which is the mind, is actually more important to be attended to. Hmm? Because somebody said, yeah, stress-free. What is the meaning of stress? So the meaning of stress is that at any particular situation, at any particular, you know, event that is happening in your life, 
to deal with that situation or to deal with that 100% you need so much of energy okay we'll see that we need that this much of energy but where are we we are somewhere here you know our energy level is somewhere here and this difference that that is stress you know so we don't have enough energy within us whether it's physical energy mental energy whatever that is yeah we are not here we are somewhere here all the time and this difference in our energy level is what is causing stress and what happens when we take in stress so what happens when we take in stress is um in the bodily level it causes diseases or uh, you know some joint pains diabetes and so many things that you can name you know you can pick <laughs> so um what we need to know is a healthy body and a healthy mind both are equally important in today's life yeah so we need to maintain mental health as well you know physical health bodily we maintain our health and you know we have shower we clean our body we take care of our body we give supplements we do lot of things but we hardly forget mind which is more important because it's only through mind that stress seeps into the body and it shows in the body yeah so the mind is a more important faculty i would say in our being yeah so uh, uh there is a very important um, you know saying in our uh, you know olden days they used to say that uh, the quality of our life depends upon the state of our mind they did not say the quality of our life depends on so many other things that we actually think it is of course uh, you know money job relationships there are so many important things in our life but you know the state of mind is so important because it has the utmost effect on our actual quality of our life directly it directly affects the quality of our life hmm? so uh, what is the to to know how to keep a healthy mind first we need to understand the um, you know the nature of the mind you know what is the nature of the mind have you observed you know most of the times um, mind is like a pendulum you know the clock's pendulum it keeps going past and the future it keeps taking us to the past future past future most of the times you know it's just oscillating so what happens when we when it takes us to the past how do we feel we feel regrets we feel anger sometimes we also glorify the past we feel happy thinking about happy mem memories isn't it but most of the time what happens it tends to bring the negative yeah when we go to the past we remember something that was very painful or we remember something that was uh, you know uh, that caused lot of difficulty in our life that caused anger you know so many emotions come up when we when the mind takes us to the past okay what happens when the mind goes to the future we feel anxious isn't it we feel worried uh, we feel scared we feel um so many other you know emotions oh what is going to happen will i be able to achieve it or not will i be able to get this will i be able to get that you know what is going to happen to me what is going to happen to this world uh, taking the current situation you know so much of anxiety so there is this oscillation mind is taking to the past or the future past or the future and accordingly we are facing the emotions yeah but where is the life happening where is the life happening it's in the present moment isn't it right now this very moment present moment yes this very moment is where we make decisions this very moment is where we see things and we perceive things and we want to plan for something ahead i'm not saying we should not plan for something ahead in the future we should not have the goals we should not have the ambitions to achieve something but whatever plans you have it's right now that we have to put the efforts right to achieve something later so the present moment is very precious it's very uh, what do i say very important to know the importance of bringing the mind to the present moment it's this moment where the life is happening where we can enjoy yeah 
where we can take decisions, where we can plan, where we can put efforts. Yeah. So the present moment is the most powerful and most important. Yeah. In everybody's life. The moment we bring our mind or at least reduce this degree of oscillation and bring the mind to the present moment, then we are in a better position to handle difficulties in life. Yeah. And to let go of the past and, you know, forgive. These are very important things. Otherwise, you know, what is the point of just hanging on to the past or, you know, going to the future and getting anxiety? Where are we enjoying the life? Isn't it? Don't you think so? So this is the moment that we need to enjoy. So, um, yeah, so uh, how to bring the mind to the present moment? So it is through breath. Breath is a very, very important, again, faculty of our being which helps to bring the mind to the present moment. Okay, because present moment is where the life is happening. We all know about it. So, um, okay, so when you, when we have spoken about the energy difference, right? So how to up our energy? There are so many sources of energy, right? So can you name any few in the chat box or if you want to share, what do you think are your sources of energy? What do you get energy from? You can just chat. This is a little bit of an interactive, just to involve everybody and make it a little more interesting. We'll, uh, yeah, you can send me some message. Prayers, yes, prayers, very good, yeah. That gives energy to the, our being. Anything else? In general, you know, including everything like body, mind. So what gives energy to us? Positive affirmations. Okay. Food. Anybody food? <laughs> Isn't it? Food is a major source of energy. Busy mind. Yes. Okay. Let's come to that. Yeah. So food, water, sunlight, so many things. Yeah. That is the first source of energy, which is the food. And we need to know what kind of food we eat, when to eat, how much to eat, everything. Everything matters, yeah? So I can go on about this for another, uh, you know, an hour, but we'll just constrict this uh, to a little bit. Air from nature, yes, very good. So we need fresh air filled with oxygen, fresh air, yes. So the first thing, okay, let us, let us keep it as um, food. Under food, we get uh, air, water, sunlight, everything. So second source of energy is sleep, isn't it? So how do, how do you feel when you don't get enough sleep? Everything is everywhere. You know, the mind is not able to concentrate. The mind is not able to focus. We are not able to relax. You just want to go and sleep. Or if you even if you sleep too much, how do you feel? You sleep like 12, 14 hours a day, continuously. How do you feel when you wake up? Oh, you know, head is so heavy. So correct amount of sleep is also very important. Hmm? So the food and sleep. Then comes, as uh, some of us were saying, prayer, positive mind, busy mind. So the third important source of energy is the mind being having a calm mind calm and focused mind that is a very 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 important aspect in our life you know we need to really think about all these things these are these are very simple very simple things but we have all um, you know we don't give too much of attention towards these things so um how do you feel when you go into a room and you speak to someone and they are complaining and complaining and complaining all the time you know you speak to that person for half an hour and that person is all the time complaining or cribbing or saying this is not right, that is not right. You might have come across people like that, yeah, in your life. So how do you feel when you speak and come out from there? Drained out, isn't it? Feel so drained out, like my God, yeah, negative energy. It drains your mind. 
out. You are in a calmer position, but when you speak to somebody like that, so we need to see that we are not in that position where we are complaining and you know uh, finding faults or uh, saying that I lack this in my life, I lack that in my life. This is not there. That is not happening. You know, so many things. Yeah. So having a calm and um, centered state of mind is very important. That is the third source of energy. So the fourth source of energy is the breath. And we hardly know about our breath, you know, sometimes we don't really uh, give too much attention again to this faculty of our uh, being. Um, you know, what is the first act of our life? What is the first act when we are born? What happens? What do we do when we, when we are just born? So we start crying, yeah? First we take a breath in and then the baby starts crying. You have to take a breath in to cry, isn't it? Yeah, so we take a breath in and we start crying. So what is the last act of life? We breathe out and hopefully others will cry around us. <laughs> we don't know, <laughs> yeah? So. So between this breath in and breath out is the whole drama of life. Everybody is going to take the first breath in. Everybody is going to take the last breath out. Yeah, nobody is here permanent. permanent. Is anybody here permanently? No, right? But we live like as though we are going to be. Oh, you know what? Guaranteed. 150 years, 200 years. Permanent. I am here. We need to be aware of these things. So between this first breath and the last breath, the whole drama of life is happening. Everybody is going through ups and downs in life, ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. Is there anybody here in this group who, who have not gone through any ups and downs in life or who are, who are having only um, continuous happiness in life or who are having continuous unhappiness in life? No, right? It's like a, wave up and down up and down up and down keeps going yeah so coming back to breath you know uh, in a general um, lifestyle that we all are having uh, we are using only 30 percent of our lung capacity yeah because of all the you know stressful uh, situations and everything so we need to increase that lung capacity to take in more oxygen and release the toxins what are these toxins? You know, 80% of our, 80 to 85% of our body toxins are released alone through breath. The rest, you know, 10, 15% could be through the body fluids. Yeah, but 85% of our body toxins are released through breath alone. So what are the toxins? You know, the moment you take any stress on your mind, it releases chemicals, unwanted chemicals inside the bloodstream. If you, if there is any doctor here, maybe they might be able to explain in a better way, but this to put it in the simplest uh, uh, way. So when we take in stress, lot of toxins are released inside the body, yeah, in the bloodstream. So they go in over the period of time, over many um, years and over many months, these toxins go and get accumulated in different parts of the body which is why we you know, have joint pains or heart problems, diabetes and what not, yeah, what not. Reduced immunity. Nowadays, everybody is talking about immunity, immunity, immunity all the time, yeah. So what is the reason for your immunity to go down? It is the stress. Very first thing is the stress, yeah. So we need to understand the scientific mechanism of our body. You take in stress, the body releases toxins, but the 85% of these toxins can be released through breath. So, um, how do you use breath to release these toxins and get a calm and peaceful mind? Have you seen that, uh, you know, breath, our breath has a very close connection with our emotions? Yeah? 
when you are angry uh, or frustrated how is your breath have you observed that how is your breath when you are angry or frustrated it's fast isn't it so fast yes it is so fast you just can't wait you just can't wait to get out of that place or just punch some person in the face or whatever you know that reaction so the breath is very fast when your emotion is like anger or you are frustrated so how is your breath when you are sad or depressed or feeling low how is the breath you know slow very heavy yeah very heavy and slow right very deep and just don't feel like breathing you know when you feeling so sad so for every emotion there is a corresponding breath pattern hmm? how is your breath when you are very happy who cares <laughs> isn't it when you are so happy you are just happy yeah you don't worry about how your breath is hmm? so yeah but if you observe usually when you are very happy your breath is also you know very relaxed and very um rhythmic yeah so now what we are going to do is if we have to bring our mind to a relaxed and calm state and also try to handle our negative emotions when you are happy and when you are cheerful you don't need much of you know you are happy that's it but the problem comes when there are negative emotions that is it is very natural to get negative emotions it's not wrong you know as human beings we we you know face all these emotions anger and frustration and things like that anxiety depression yeah. but the key to handle these emotions is the breath breath is like um, you know the mind is like the kite which is just flying in all sorts of places but to bring the uh, kite to a particular you know having the control on the kite you need the string right that is the breath so mind is the kite and breath is the string that controls the mind yeah you know the very sorry full thing in these days is that children at school are being taught so many things you know like uh, where they are taught social science maths uh, languages and but nobody teaches them how to handle their emotions how to express themselves how to you know um, isn't it don't you all think so it is so important for children to learn that how to handle their emotions how to uh, deal with the situations um yeah so it it ap applies to the adults also these days because when there is a tough situation when there is a very difficult situation there are two things that we do the first is that we either react to the situation or we respond to the situation so what is the difference between reacting and responding reacting usually comes immediate we don't think whether it is right or wrong or we don't think whether it is right or right for myself is it going to do good for me or not so reacting is almost immediate yeah reaction leads to further stress there is a stressful situation and that is causing stress to you but we react to the situation when when somebody says ah oh, you are this you are that you know good and immediately we get we are angry and we react to the situation right but responding is when you are in that calm state of mind when your mind is more relaxed and in the present moment you you have the ability to step back a little bit and think as a witness to the situation you become a witness you know and then you think oh this is a situation here how am i going to respond to this yeah responsiveness it's giving a thought it's giving a pause and then thinking whether this is the right thing for me to do or not whether this is going to cause me further stress or not whether i can you know solve this issue by being calm 
it is going to help me further right it is going to make things all right but you know we are usually there you know immediately you know trying to find uh, a response we immediately immediately we are trying to find solutions so you usually respond when your mind is calm and you react when the mind is not calm yeah so when the mind is not calm and we react to things we later on feel regretful you know oh you know i should not have behaved like this i should not have spoken like this no i should not i should have dealt with this better it could be your workplace it could be at home it could be anything anywhere yeah so um yeah we have uh, understood the nature of the mind we have understood you know um, the importance of breath so if you have any questions regarding this we can just quickly take a few questions and then we can learn some breathing techniques which will help us bring our mind to the calm state we can express that too much of talking now we'll go into the practicals yeah any questions until now anybody if you have any questions okay okay yes okay um so first thing is um the breath as we know you don't have to of course nowadays you have lot of uh, information on um, you know online like youtube and a lot of places lot of uh, people are doing lot of workshops wonderful workshops yeah so there are a lot of ways in which you can bring your mind to the present moment put it in a more calmer and more relaxed state so um first thing is the breath second thing is somebody said prayers chanting meditation you know even listening to good music which is which you really love but all these things don't have to be too complicated so don't think that if you do something very complicated you will get lot of good results it is not like that the only thing that will help you is continuous practice 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 so you do some kind of practice you know you some people start with surya namaskar or something one particular day they'll do it for the first day they'll do it for the second day and then oh you know what nothing is happening you know i don't feel any change so please um don't let your mind uh, trick you into this because it's very very important to practice whatever that is you choose whatever that chanting you choose or whatever uh, breathing techniques you choose whatever yoga postures you decide to do do it continuously that is very very important so only over a period of time you will be able to notice the positive difference yeah it is not a magic that happens overnight so uh, i'm sure uh, all of us here um, are already on this uh, path you know for well being and um, holistic approach of uh, being healthy and everything but uh, this is just from my experience that i'm speaking that uh, i see many people who join the courses do a lot of uh, um, you know yoga meditation and then after a few days it just uh, tapers down and they get back to their own uh, previous self so Uh, don't allow the mind to trick you into this hmm? then uh, yeah choosing the simplest way to start with is very always very good so if you want to start with chanting say you can start with the om namah shivaya chanting or uh, om namo bhagavate vasudevaya whatever that is you know close to your heart it doesn't have to be too complicated simple things but doing it for say 10 minutes if you just chant that om namah shivaya chanting for 10 minutes i bet you you will find a lot of positive difference in your body and your mind and your environment as well yeah but today we'll uh, so, uh, we'll um, learn some very simple breathing techniques that you can practice uh, every day at home so most of us might be knowing uh, the anulom vilom alternate nostril breathing so um since i am not able to see everybody here um, you know videos are off so i'll just give the basic instructions and we'll practice the anulom vilom um this is also called as the nadi shodhan pranayama nadis you know there are 112 nadis in our body and uh, you know the clusters clusters of nerves in different parts of the body yeah 
so when we do the anulom vilom it balances all the you know it uh, it draws the energy or the prana there is no english word for prana actually prana is the sanskrit term sanskrit term for the life force energy you know when we are breathing this is not just air going in and out there is also very subtle life force that is going in and out along with the breath that is called as the prana okay or the part of the small part of the consciousness so it keeps going in and out when we are breathing yeah so this prana has the immense ability to relax our body relax our mind you know ease all the nadis if there are any if there is any tightness in the body which causes you no know, aches and pains and everything so the nadi shodhan pranayam is very very um, effective yeah to keep good overall health uh, body health as well as mental health yeah and uh, over a period of time when you keep practicing this continuously it also helps you um, get back uh, from the negative uh, emotions very quickly everybody gets angry in life but how quickly are, do you come out of it that is what matters right there is nobody that you can't say that i never get angry okay there are some great gurus and sad gurus and you know um, people who are who don't get angry at all but uh, you know since we are the people who are in this world and we are experiencing um, you know so many uh difficult situations uh, you know dealing with people and de dealing with different types of minds we happen to get all these negative emotions so how quickly do you bring out of bring yourself out of that situation is what really matters that makes a difference in life you can be angry with somebody for 2 years for 10 years you can be angry with somebody for 6 months 3 months you can be angry with somebody for 2 minutes you can come out of it quickly yeah so nadi shodhan pranayama will release all the tightness in the body and it helps you it helps the blood circulation so it helps keep all the organs very healthy and also relaxes the mind okay so to practice any breathing technique there are a few guidelines that you need to follow yeah the first thing is the spine needs to be erect even if you are sitting on a chair sit on the front half of the chair so that you are spine is erect if you tend to lean back there is a you know boat shaped um uh, um you know boat shape uh, for your spine which is not good it it's not a very clear passage for the air to go in and out so make sure that the spine is erect and you're sitting comfortably yeah so this is very important and um yeah so to start with the anulom vilom what we do is we will make chin mudra this is chin mudra so the tip of the thumb and the index finger of your left hand is in chin mudra chin mudra okay this is chin mudra you place it facing upwards on your thigh on your left thigh just place it relaxed okay and with your right hand you make three groups one is a thumb the second group is the index finger and the middle finger the last group is the ring finger and the little finger so three groups okay so the middle group the index finger and the ring finger you place it gently in between your eyebrows on your agnya chakra yeah just on your forehead like that and thumb on your right nostril don't close the nostril yet just place it gently and the last group ring finger and little finger on your left nostril okay this is the position for doing the alternate nostril breathing okay spine erect and left hand in chin mudra placed on your left thigh facing upwards and this is the position okay so now what happens is first we have to take a deep breath from both the nostrils then close the right nostril and closing the right nostril and breathe out through left okay 
Now breathe in from left, keeping that same nostril open. Breathe in from left, deep breath in. Now close the left and open the right and breathe out from right. Okay, now breathe in from right. Close the right. Breathe out from left. Breathe in from left. Close the left. Breathe out from right. Continue. Breathe in from right. Breathe out from left. Breathe in from left. Breathe out from right. If you're comfortable now, you can keep your eyes closed. Breathe in from right. Breathe out from left. Breathe in from left. Breathe out from right. And continue. Keep your spine erect and keep breathing. as deep as possible. Take very deep breaths in and out.
Now with your eyes closed, relax your palms. Relax your shoulders. Observe if there is any sensation in the body. And slowly, let's open our eyes. Okay. So if you have any questions, any doubts regarding this, you can um, post it in the chat um, and we can discuss again about this um, in the end of the session. Okay. Should we hold the breath for a few seconds, say five counts after every breath in and every, yes, you can do that. Uh, if you're feeling comfortable and um, you know if your breath is strong enough that you can hold your breath inside for five seconds like you breathe in hold it and then breathe out you can hold it for four to five seconds and breathe out or if you want to you know uh, just do the usual so the breath is going in and out in and out yeah so that you can do yeah can we start the pranayama from left yeah, you have to start the pranayama from the left nostril. Yeah, um, and then right. And then again from the right, it goes in and left. So the most important thing is uh, you have to practice this for not more than, I would suggest for not more than three to four minutes every day at one stretch. Because I have seen people, if you feel so good, you st tend to, you know, there is a tendency to uh, make you feel that, okay, if I do it for longer time, maybe I'll feel more good about it. But that is not the right way of doing because I have seen adverse effects happening to people. Okay, so please make sure that you can practice twice every day if you want. Yeah, if you're feeling very tired, very stressful or you're um, seven to eight minutes. Um, yeah, I would say for uh, people who are beginners, um please stick to three to four minutes yeah that should be more than enough actually that's more than enough if your lungs are very clear it, it starts getting clear your lungs capacity as we discussed um usually it's only you know 30 percent of our lung capacity that we are using so please start with three to four minutes and keep a timer on because there was somebody who did it for say 20 minutes and then they didn't know what was happening around them they lost a part of that memory temporarily and then they, they got back after three days so let us not you know get into all these kind of things so please stick to the guidelines yeah only three to four minutes is enough if you're used to doing it for seven minutes then that's fine but uh, my suggestion is to do it for three to four minutes only twice you can do it morning to make you feel more energetic evening if you have had a very busy day and you're tired you can do it in the evening as well okay so uh, there is another very, very important breathing technique, which is called as a straw breathing. Okay. Oh, sorry, something. Was... Oh, okay. It's it's from you, Guru Ji. Okay, fine, no problem. Uh, uh, there, was yeah. question, there was a question. Yeah. What is the significance of keeping the finger on the forehead? I wanted to copy paste that. Uh, something. Oh, else. okay, okay. <laughs> significance is nothing. I mean. No basically you do this is what is most important this is just to uh, some uh, you know my understanding is that it drives energy you know about the mudras right you know there are a lot of mudras chin mudra chinmaya mudra adi mudra merudanda mudra so this hand the fingers are the main um, centers where you draw energy so energy drawing centers are your palms. Say when you do meditation, when you're meditating or when you're doing any other uh, chanting, they usually say that you need to keep your palms open so that there is some amount of energy, positive energy being drawn by the fingers as well. So when you keep this, there's some, uh, some amount of energy going to the, you know, Agnya Chakra, that is the forehead chakra as well. So 
Apart from this, I am not aware of any other uh, valid reason that it is kept. But instead of keeping it open, you can just place it here, which also does good for you. Yeah. So that is what is my understanding. If you have any other, uh, you can share it here. If you have any other uh, things, it will be good for me also to learn if you have any other uh, um, understanding about this. Yeah, there's one more question. I'm sorry, I'm not able to. Okay. Is that a question? Energy switches, uh, Prasanna ji? Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, fine. Uh, so the next uh, type of breath is uh, is called as a straw breathing you know people who have um, very high blood pressure or when you're feeling too much of anxiety and you just want to relax when you're having a very tough situation going on and there are too many thoughts in the mind this uh, type of breathing is very very effective it is, it is very simple but very effective yeah so how we do the straw breathing is as usual we keep our back straight and we take a very deep breath in from the nostril yeah and while breathing out we make a small opening in between our lips as wide as a straw like imagine you have a imaginary straw in your uh, mouth and you're breathing out through the straw yeah so how is the breath it's a very long breath long deep breath out yeah so Yeah, so long, you know, it can go on for a few uh, minutes, actually, if you are uh, able to hold that, you know, that is a straw breathing. So we can all practice this. Uh, let us just do this for two minutes now, and then uh, we can do it, you know, individually at our home. Yeah, so let's keep our back straight, palms, you can keep it open to the ceiling, and then take a breath in. And make a small opening in between your lips as wide as a straw and breathe out long continuous breath. Breathe in again, continue. And relax. Okay. You can open your eyes. Since this is a one hour program, we are, I'm just a little bit, uh, uh, you know, increasing the speed because I would like to complete everything. Uh, should we fold the tongue? No need. You just have to make a small opening and just breathe out because this really relaxes all the organs inside and nerves and everything, and it will help you uh, get rid of your anxieties, like an immediate, like an instant coffee, just, uh, you know, 
helps you feel more relaxed when you do this, when you're feeling very stressed out or tired and anxiety, yeah? So this is the straw breathing. Um, before we go into, if we have time, we'll go into the Brahmari uh, Pranayama later. Uh, before this, I would like to discuss something about happiness. What is your idea of happiness? What does happiness mean to you personally? If you can just share a um, quick few words, that will be really, really good. Like, for example, um, for some of us, happiness means being with family or some of us, um, when we achieve something, you know, that we have planned for. Um, yeah, things go as my plan. Yeah, when we plan something and things go as they are, that is happiness. For some people, relaxation is happiness. Yeah. Anything else? Please do share what happiness means because this is really important, you know. We need to dig out all the things that we believe that gives us happiness and share with others also because others might get a have a different perspective of what happiness is and we can learn all to, all of us can learn together yeah so sharing is happiness yeah that's good yeah that's really nice sharing is happiness happiness is a state of mind in which there is joy love and peace very good yeah connected with minds of ours yes yeah, being, having a healthy mind, healthy body, a very beautiful state of mind with a lot of peace, joy. Yeah, all this is happiness, yeah? So are we happy all the time? No. Why? <laughs> what is stopping us from being happy all the time? See, when we attach happiness to a person or to a thing or to a particular situation, okay? So what is happening here? Mental and emo emotional states. Yes, very good, very good. Yeah, we'll come to that point. Uh, what we are doing here is, um, when, see, when we are in high school, we'll say that, you know, my elder brother or elder sister, she's in college, she keeps bunking classes. She's so happy, you know, nobody is there to, you know, hold a stick and say, go to the school. So we think that our elder brothers, elder sisters are more happier than us, yeah? And then what happens? We come to college, we have so much to study. We have, oh my God, all the, um, you know, um, 10 standard, 12 standard public exams and all that. Okay, that is also done, over. So once I finish that 12th standard exams and then when I get into my degree, oh, I'm the happiest person. Okay, fine, that also happens. You get into the degree. Then what happens? You know what? If I get a very good job, you know, if I land in my that dream job, then I'm happy. God is very great, you know, he's very karuna mai. He'll say, okay, tathastu, fine. We get our dream job. Then what happens? How long are we happy? Isn't it? Then what happens? You know, my life partner, I should get a very good life partner. Then I'm settled for life. You know, then God says, okay, tathastu, fine. Get a very good life partner. Then what happens? You know what? Children. Yeah, I should get children. Then I, when I have kids, then I'll be very happy. Yeah. Okay, kids. Then, what, oh, you know, when they grow up, they have to be very successful. They should get very good, uh, you know, scores in their 10th and 12th and everything. Then I am very happy. So it's like we are making the bed throughout the night. We are saying, okay, this here, I'll, let me just make it more softer. We'll add more cushions. We'll add more bed spreads. We'll do everything. You are making the bed throughout the night, but you're not sleeping on it. This is what we all are doing in life. We are postponing the happiness. Life should be an expression of happiness, not pursuit of happiness. 
you're thinking that happiness is somewhere you know attached to a person attached to an event attached to things when i get my house when i get a car i am no we are not saying you should not get it but the wisdom a wise man always delinks the happiness from these things and is happy naturally whether that thing happens or not whether you get that thing or not whether you achieve that thing or not you are still happy that is the um what do you say identity of a, a spiritual person the identity of a spiritual person is an undying smile being happy content and grateful for that which we already have and then work towards whatever you know have you always got all the things that we wanted in life anybody here in this group you want 10 things in life have you got all the 10 things in life or all the things have happened as per your uh, you know uh, time frame no right we get some things we don't get some things so when we get something we are very happy but when we don't get something you now we pull ourselves down isn't it so this is what is the wisdom of life wisdom of life. have you seen a child small child a toddler 2 years 3 years 4 years old when you give an ice cream in the hand or a chocolate in the hand of a child the whole ice cream or the chocolate becomes the world for the child it is just involved it's so immersed in that nothing else matters at that time isn't it that present moment it's enjoying to the fullest it just may be a small piece of chocolate but as adults we have somewhere you know forgotten some so if a child cries there is a reason behind it isn't it it's either hungry or it's somewhere got hurt or you know so the default state of a child is to be happy it's happy all the time isn't it it needs a reason to be unhappy but what about us adults we need reasons we search for reasons to be happy and default state is oh you know i don't have this that is not correct this is not correct this is not clean that is not clean this is something is happening somebody said this to me so we need to really realize as to what we hold on to in our life and what we let go of okay so what do we hold on to all the wonderful things we are blessed actually we are so blessed you know to get a fresh air to breathe to have two meals per day you know so many people across the world they are not having that and we are blessed isn't it so count your blessings and be happy and grateful for all the things that we already have that we are already blessed with that brings your mind to a more calmer state that gives you more energy in the mind and body to work for something that you wish for but when you don't get something don't feel bad just move on be happy and move on that's what matters in life yeah so um yeah so this is about happiness if you have any other perspective of what you feel is about happiness so happiness is as some prasanna ji said it's a state of mind we need to cultivate that state of mind we need to make it a habit you know what has become a habit complaining picking out small things finding others faults or you have your mind in the same way somebody else has their own mind you cannot correct somebody else you cannot expect somebody else to change their mind and become exactly like you it's not possible is it it's not there are like 7 billion people everybody has different minds everybody has different opinions everybody has different ideas and it's not that one person is right one person is wrong according to them they are right according to you you are right okay so cultivating that you know state of mind of being happy irrespective of what happens come what may i'll be happy nobody can steal that happiness that smile from me you know this is what is the um identity of a wise person 
because when you are in that state yes when you are in that state of mind when you are in that state of calm and peaceful and happy mind you are able to go further and help others people who come in your contact will start feeling that you know happiness is like a wave it just radiates when somebody comes to say oh you're so happy you're so you're so joyful all the time you know i want to be like you and when they go out they they also have that you know part of that uh, wave that happiness they carry it further not like the one we discussed before complaining complaining and then you know you go out and you feel drained out so we should not be the person who spreads tiredness we need to be happy yeah so one more most important thing is uh, do we have time a uh, little more time uh, gurudev ji yeah okay uh, so we'll do a quick powerful meditation okay so i'm sure here all of us are meditators we are already on the path and everything but as i told practice is a must i cannot emphasize more on this every single day we need to practice little bit of yoga 10 minutes of yoga okay 10 minutes of um you know the breathing techniques whatever you have learned anulom vilom is a very good uh, along with that uh, you can do the straw sorry straw breathing and then uh, if we have time we'll learn brahmari pranayama later so 10 minutes of some breathing you know some little bit of breathing like some people do the kapal bhati and all that and then 10 minutes of meditation is more than enough to keep you happy healthy mind is healthy emotions are in place um, body is healthy and in the present moment but continuous practice is a must so we need to devote at least 30 minutes is minimum actually i'm asking 30 minutes of sadhana we call all these spiritual practices sadhana so 30 minutes of sadhana is very very important in everybody's life okay even children hmm? from 8 years onwards okay so meditation so uh, often people have different um, methods of meditation there is nothing wrong or right but whichever suits you the best you can stick to that um so some people you know they look into uh, uh, constantly they look into uh, a candle light some people they have the, they take they go deep into meditation through imagination yeah and some people use mantras in meditation they don't chant aloud but they use mantras in meditation um but uh, today i would like to share something that is very close to my heart and which has really worked wonders for me and um, i feel i felt it was very easy because i have also learned many different types of uh, techniques of meditation and i found this to be the most easiest to practice because i don't need um a, an um you know a, a speaker or a audio player or anything i don't need anything i can just sit wherever i am may, maybe at home uh, or in my car or uh, when i am traveling to india in a flight so it doesn't matter where i am i can just sit with my eyes closed i can and i can do this meditation and it takes me very deep in meditation so this is a very simple but very profound and it takes you very deep into meditation okay so what we do here is the best um, tool uh which is already present within yourself is your breath yeah so when we are doing this meditation you know this is also been uh described as the most easiest simplest meditation in uh, vigyana bhairava you know there is one um, uh story that uh, uh, goddess parvati uh, she saw she used to see uh, lord shiva all the time um you know deep in meditation he used to go into that samadhi state so what is samadhi is samadhi we always say that a, a, a person's dead dead body right we call it as samadhi um, but this samadhi when you are in meditate meditative state is so different only difference is that your prana is still going in and out but you get that very deep relaxation where you don't feel that you are awake or you are alive you know all your uh, consciousness your body your mind everything lines up and you get that deep relaxation state yeah so 
Lord Shiva says that, uh, yes, I'll share all the meditation techniques um, with you. Uh, so the first, he shares about 102 different meditation techniques. Um, but uh, today we'll stick to the first one, which is the simplest one. Yeah. In this, what happens is when you are just, when you close your eyes and you take deep breaths, what happens is the breath starts about, you can say 12 inches here, yeah, near the chest, 12 inches from here, you feel that the breath is going in and it goes into your nostril and it takes a turn and goes down towards your lungs. Yeah. And when you breathe out, the air comes out, the same path is followed and then it comes out 12 inches outside. So having your complete attention on your breath is the very simplest form of meditation and it's, it takes you very deep as well. After some time, you might not know where you are or you know, people have different experiences. So I'll be giving the instructions. Um, you just need to keep your eyes closed and have your complete attention on your breath. Okay. Let us start with it and then we'll discuss more after uh, the meditation how we feel about it okay okay so let's keep our back straight as of now shoulders relaxed sit comfortably with your eyes closed just take a normal breath in breathe out Let us just take one moment to observe the mind. Just observe how many thoughts are coming. All the thoughts. coming one after the other. Now take a deep breath in and breathe out. If there are any noises, sounds in your environment. Just accept them. The sounds of birds, children playing, fan rotating, people talking, traffic, any sound that you hear. Let us completely accept all the noises. Let's be okay with it. Take another deep breath in and relax. just become aware of a dot 12 inches from your nose just a vague idea it doesn't have to be exact Take a deep breath in and breathe out. Now 
become aware of the air around your body like fish in water our body is in the air Take a deep breath in. Feel the air at the tip of your nostrils. And breathe out. Feel the temperature of the air. It might be cold, warm. Take another breath in. And feel the breath moving through the nostrils up towards the center of your eyebrows. And relax. Feel the breath again through the nostrils to the center of the eyebrows and breathe out. Keep taking deep breaths in and out effortlessly. The breath moves from outside of the body, touches the nostrils, moves through the nostrils and out again. Complete awareness on the breath. Long, deep breaths in and out, as deep as you can take, and as long as you can exhale. Every breath in energizes the body, and every breath out relaxes the body more and more. Keep taking deep breaths in and out. with total awareness on the breath.
the breath moves in and takes a turn to move downwards to the throat feel the air feel the prana near the throat Keep taking deep breaths, in and out. temperature of the breath near the nostril moves up the nostril takes a turn to the throat and back breathe in deeper Breath goes deeper into the lungs and heart to the chest region. The chest expands when you breathe in. And contracts when you breathe out. Observe the temperature of the breath moving out through the nostril. Slightly more warmer than the breath in. Deep breath in. And long breath out and continue. Keep your awareness on the breath. Breath is the most beautiful gift of nature. 
gift from God. Let us be with our breath 100%. Every breath in energizes the body and every breath out relaxes the body and mind more and more. Breathe in from the nostril to the chest. And breathe out from the chest to the nostril and out. Long, deep breaths in and out. Every breath is like a warrior. Every breath out is another warrior. Mind is slowly settling down.
Luka Samasta Tukino Bhavantu Luka Samasta Tukino Bhavantu Luka Samasta Tukino Take a deep breath in and slowly breathe out. One more deep breath in and relax. Let us slowly become aware of our body and surroundings. Slowly and gradually taking our own time. Let's open our eyes. If anybody wants to share how your mind is feeling now, are there lesser thoughts, you're feeling more relaxed, you can share, please. Very calm, nice.
Anybody else? You don't feel like talking. <laughs> yeah. So calm and peaceful. Amazing experience. Yeah. Very relaxing, isn't it? Yeah. It's very good to meditate, you know, every day. It's like uh, we, we have shower, no, for our body. It's cleansing the mind, meditation. Yeah, calm and relaxed. Very nice. So this is a very simple form of meditating. Very easy, you know, but very, very deep. It takes you more deeper as in more you practice. So as I told, practicing is very, very important. So let us make it a part of our routine. Hmm? So when we wake up in the morning, we don't think, right, whether we have to brush our teeth or not. Automatically, we go and brush our teeth, isn't it? The same way, this should become our routine. Meditation is very important. It builds your immunity. It makes your immunity so powerful. You don't have to worry about any kind of you know, virus or whatever that is. You know? And it makes your mind so calm and peaceful and relaxed that you'll be in such better position to handle things in life. Yeah, And if you keep jotting down all the benefits of meditation, you know, there are thousands of benefits and uh, it's not possible to consolidate everything and make it short and you know, so much is the benefit of meditating. And it's really important for all of us to men maintain the mental hygiene as equal as the physical hygiene, mental hygiene is very important. So I really hope you all make it a practice um, if you have not already started doing it, please start doing your, your regular practices, a little bit of yoga. Yes, uh, you can get it. You can get my uh, contact details from uh, Gurudadji if you want. Uh, and uh, before uh, we end the session, um, I would just like to uh, tell you all something from my heart, you know. Um, Life is, um, as we all know, um, there are so many unex unexpected things happening, right? Um, we really need to be grateful. First thing is being grateful for what you already have, being content, you know, being content. Contentment has, again, three different types, yeah? You ask for something, you get it, and then you feel content. Yeah, I'm happy, you know, I'm content that I've got that. The second type of contentment is you ask for something, but you don't get it, but still, you know, it's okay, you know, you feel content. It's okay, no problem. That is second type of contentment. The third type of contentment is you don't ask for something and something is thrown at you unexpectedly. Accepting that and being content is the highest form of contentment. Okay, so this is very important to be content and to be grateful for what we are given in this life and being happy come what may. Okay, so that is very important. Come what may, I'm not going to lose my smile. It's not worth it. You know? Losing your smile for anything is not, it's not worth at all in this life. So be happy, keep others happy around you, be safe, be healthy, mentally, physically, emotionally. And yeah, um, I'm very happy that uh, and thankful that you all joined today. And uh, before leaving, I, I would just request everybody to write down one, um, you know, um, yes, Prasanna ji, I completely agree. With only 14 muscles to smile, but you use too many muscles to keep a frown on the face, right? So when you smile, you're relaxing all the muscles, 14 muscles, yeah? So please write down one point that has touched your heart today. Any one point that you will remember like forever. So if you can share that one point, then it'll be very nice. I will also make a, a, 
a, a draw like a bullet points of today's uh, whatever we have discussed and i'll send it to uh, gurudaj ji maybe you can share it uh, with uh, through email ids everybody whoever have joined today is it possible sure 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 satisfaction yes yeah yes that's very important right satisfaction anybody else if you would like to share just one word or a sentence that is really close to your heart i'll be really happy <laughs> relaxation yes thank you thank you very relaxing right so yeah <laughs> thank you prasanna ji simplicity in presentation thank you so yeah to be happy with what we are given thank you so much and i look forward for another session sometime in the future <laughs> yeah so that i can uh, you know take account as to whether everybody has been practicing continuously so these are very simple techniques so please do practice at home that's very important to be happy in all situations come what may this shouldn't become straight or shouldn't go down yeah that's good <laughs> so thank you so much gurda ji for inviting yeah. me yeah. thanks to everybody for joining thank you palak ji thank you so okay. much see you all again <laughs> see you all again all the thank participants uh, we will have a next session on october uh, 9th again mm -hmm. we will have one more person joining from uh, london so please uh, do join and thanking you again pallavi uh, ji we definitely would like to have one more session with you yes definitely sure thank you so much good evening everyone take care